Welcome to episode eight of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our one and only David Stocken tackles part one of a two-part series answering the question, what is the four-point soil resistivity test? Yeah, that's a great question. So the four-point soil resistivity test is a test that we use to measure uh, how conductive the soil is below our feet. Uh, It has nothing to do with metal whatsoever. It's just the dirt, right? That's all we're worried about is the soil. We've all driven through a mountain pass and you see where the earth's been cut away and you see various layers of different soil. And those, those layers will have different uh, resistances to it and different conductivities where uh, electricity will propagate through them differently right and it can it vary quite dramatically so uh, clay and muds will really are very highly conductive uh, and they will really conduct electricity quite well where granite rock is fairly resistive I mean it and we're talking uh, the difference sometimes between a few ohms of resistance Uh, compared to millions of ohms of resistance. So we're talking many orders of magnitude uh, difference in that soil. And understanding when we put a design or install a grounding system, understanding whether that soil gets more conductive as you go deeper or more resistive really plays huge impacts on our grounding system and how effective it is. And even more importantly, when we deal with Um, human safety such as step and touch voltages. So we really do need to have a good understanding of what the soil is like when we're designing a grounding system, right? And in the case of measurement, we typically in the grounding business, we tend to use a method called the winner four point method. And what we have is when you have your standard ohm meter at your home, right? Your standard multimeter, Um, Well, that meter is both, it has two wires. It's both injecting a current and measuring a voltage uh, with the same two wires. So we have to account for line lead loss. But back in the day when Thomas Edison and these guys were dealing with the original original founding fathers of electricity, if you would, were dealing with it, they didn't have fancy multimeters. They had a signal generator and a voltmeter, right? So they would inject a current across the resistance with two wires, and then they would measure the voltage drop with another two wires that went to a different meter. So they had four wires in order to measure resistance. This guy Wenner back in, oh, I wanna say it was 1906, 1901, ooh, forgive me guys way back at the early turn of the century, he wrote a paper where he discovered that if he placed the current probes on the outside and the voltage probes on the inside, he could measure down into the earth and get an average soil resistivity. And what he found out was he wanted equal spacing. So if he placed uh, the probes at five foot spacing, he could actually measure down into the earth, five feet into the earth, right? So three times across the surface of the earth would get him a measurement of one time down into the earth, right? So what he would do is he'd place a current probe at zero and the other one at 15 feet. Then he would place his two potential probes at five and 10. So he had a first probe was at zero, five, 10, and 15. He would inject current on the outer two probes. It would go down into the earth like a rainbow down five feet into the earth and then he would have the two inner probes and they would measure the voltage drop across that surface of the earth from the surface of the earth down to approximately five feet. Now for you engineers out there of course there's a lot of you know put an asterisk besides all that there's a lot of variables in there right you know uh, surface interface layers and you know you name it there's a ton of little variables that change that but this is a good way to understand how this test is working is that uh, by going across the surface of the earth linearly, we get down depth into the earth. 
And by changing those spacings, we get deeper and deeper into the earth. So if we put it at, say, 100 foot spacings, right? So we put one probe at zero, another one at 100 foot, then a third probe at 200 foot, and a fourth probe out at 300 feet. So each probe is 100 feet spacing. We get a measurement down, or a sounding, if you would, down about 100 feet into the earth. Right? And if we do enough slices at different layers and depths, we can actually start getting a very good understanding of what the overall soil resistivity is. That's, and we get what's called a soil model. So we can f start calculating and estimating what the breaks in the layers are. You know, that you've got a layer that's five feet thick at 100 ohm meters. And, and then you got another layer that's 10 feet thick at 200 ohm meters or whatever the case is we can actually calculate that by taking a series of different readings out across the surface of the earth right now uh, this is a very complicated uh, test far more than we have in time for a short little 10 minute video and podcast here um, but need to say this is the type of test they used around Stonehenge to find some of the old buried work sites, and it, it can be used to find uh, uh, buried pipelines and caves or big boulders and rocks. Uh, they have 1D versions of this, 2D, and even 3D imaging technology can be done using very similar te techniques to this winter method and there are numerous different methodologies out there uh, beyond just the winter method it just happens to be a method that we tend to use a lot in the grounding and earthing game so there's plenty of different things to do with this they even use it for measuring water believe it or not uh, but uh, this technique and this ability to measure this is very important because we get changes in the soil resistivity based on the weather and seasonal conditions right so when uh, the uh, ground freezes, when you get frozen ground, it actually in dramatically increases the resistance of the top layer of the soil where you're standing on. And that causes an increase in touch voltages, right? Having a good understanding of the type of soil, what those resistances are at the level of the feet in particular, is very key and very important to human safety so that we can calculate what's going to happen when weather changes, when it gets wet and hot versus frozen and cold, right? Um, also, having an understanding of the, how uh, the deeper layers tells us how faults are going to propagate through the earth, right? The deep layers tend to impact the propagation of the electricity. The top layers of our soil tend to impact our human safety. And having good, clean, accurate data using uh, the right types of metering technology is very important, particularly when we're dealing with a substation. There's a lot of residential grade meters out there. Those are great for doing simple design uh, specs or you're just trying to calculate a resistance to ground of an electrode system. You're trying to figure out what the corrosivity of the soil is. Perfectly good for those kinds of uh, 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 measurements and techniques but as soon as you get into human safety where you're trying to protect personnel from the hazards of step and touch voltages you really want to make sure you're using industrial grade metering technology that's using true DC with induced polarization type uh, uh, metering and measurement techniques or you're really going to end up having some significant problems so um, these are our, uh, this is basically the winter four-point method. It is a technique for uh, calculating out and figuring out what is in the earth below our feet for use in our uh, grounding systems. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you want to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. We'll see you next time.